I, I don't shout. All right. Um, my class is starting in 40 minutes exactly, my, my Capoferro class. So uh, if any of you want, um, so firstly, it would be helpful to me, who is staying for my class? Right, pretty much everyone. So what we'll do, because we are traditionally slightly behind schedule, <laughs> um, I'll just run the warm up straight into the class so I won't do a formal break at, oh, it's 10.30, now the formal class is starting. We'll just kind of segue from the general warm up into the class, which means, of course, that I'll be adjusting the end of the warm up to really suit what we're going to be doing in the class. Okay. First things first, I have one inviolable rule in every class, and it is this. You must finish training healthier than you started it, okay? This is particularly true with warm-ups, right? I'm going to be doing what works for me, and you are welcome to play with it, fiddle about with it, change it, do something different. If you have a dodgy knee that shouldn't be doing what I'm doing, don't do it, okay? Almost all historical martial arts injuries, like in my experience, certainly in my sal, are self-inflicted. Yeah, somebody does something that they shouldn't with their body and something bad happens. So the point of the warm-up is, well, really, what I said to Martin was every day, pretty much, because I'm 48, nearly 49, I've been doing martial arts for 30 years or so, and I've been lending my skeleton to beginners to practice on for much of that time, there are things I need to do to be able to do my capoferro stuff properly, right? Warm-ups and joint stuff and what have you. So I'm going to be doing that anyway, and if anyone would like to join, just let them know they're welcome to do so. So he took that suggestion of me in a corner of a hall somewhere just doing some, you know, this sort of stuff, um, and said, right, okay, guy's leading the warm-ups, brilliant. <laughs> Which is fine for me, fine for me, but um, just understand where it came from. Before we actually get moving, a couple of things to think about. The first is, when we are doing a movement, we are looking to get the benefit in a particular time frame. If Martin is stabbing me in the face with a rapier and I parry, the movement is intended to do me some benefit immediately, right? If I know I'm going to be doing a Capoferro class and is supposed to be doing me some good in maybe 10 minutes time, 15 minutes time, half an hour's time, right? And there are other practices like, for instance, some of the leg exercises I do where the purpose is to maintain or develop strength and I'm getting the benefit of those exercises in three months time, six months time, five years time or whatever. So what we're going to be doing this morning um, for the warm up is going to be stuff that is intended to benefit you in 10 minutes time or in maybe three months time. Okay. It does not make sense if you know you've got a rapier class coming to trash your legs doing strength training. Yeah, because it'll, it'll take away from the quality of the class, okay? What I would like you to get out of the warm-up section is simply the idea that it's good to have a physical practice that is intended to keep you healthy so you can keep hitting people in the head with swords until you die at the age of 95 or 100, okay? So really what I'm doing in this first section is trying to make sure that I can still stab you fuckers in the face in 40 years' time. Right? I am. I, I tend to have a very long window. Right? So, don't feel you have to copy everything that I'm doing. These exercises work for me, and I use them. I do them a lot, so I'm quite good at some of them. Right? Um, bear in mind you have a whole day of fencing coming. It doesn't make sense to. Um, honestly, I'm aiming this at the men under 30. It doesn't make sense to show off to all everyone in the class how many one-arm push-ups you can do like this, right? Keep it in the pocket, keep it gentle, keep it relaxed, and use it as a way of kind of easing into the rapier stuff, which is a little extreme. Okay? All right. You're probably going to want a mat because we're going to be doing quite a lot of stuff on the ground. And I have, I've brought my own TheraBand, this thing, um, and Martin has a box of similar things so grab yourselves a mat and a band 
and come back here momentarily. Start by just taking a gentle survey of what needs to be done. So just gently swing. Nice and relax. Get the weight all the way from one foot to the other. Relax your back, relax your arms. And swing the arms up. Super relaxed. And back to the middle. Okay, now we're going to go through the joints, starting at the feet. So gently just rotate the ankle. And the other way. Now you can't see it, but inside my shoe, I'm spreading my toes and closing them. It helps to do the hand at the same time, but you're trying to just open up the foot as much as you can. Lovely. Okay, and the other foot. I don't believe it. An entire class that can stand on one leg. Honestly, that's unusual. <laughs> Other way. <laughs> and open and close. And relax. Knees. Just gently. You're more looking for problems seeing whether everything's feeling okay. And the other way. Open. Other way. And just gently stretch. And come up. Okay, so the tailbone, so rotating the tailbone, leaving the knees and the shoulders where they are. And the other way. This doesn't make for a great photo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends what kind of photo you're looking for. All right, and our legs straight, back straight, open up the hips, nice and relaxed, nice and easy. And the other way. We're going to be doing quite a bit with the hips because the capoeira stuff demands it. And relax. Okay, bring up a knee and open. And the other side. See, it's all very gentle and relaxed, isn't it? It's nice. I mean, it's Saturday morning. It doesn't do to be working too hard. And relax. Get that gentle kick. Okay. Roll the shoulders. open. Nice big circles. And the other way. Opposite directions. And the other way. And 
and relax. Okay, hands in front of you. You're gonna roll the fingers and the wrists, turn and press back behind you. So you're opening the, the wrists back and the shoulders back. Okay, so roll and press back. Okay, and from this back position, so press the backs of the wrists out and then the palms and the backs of the wrists and the palms just coming gently up. And gently stretch. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. Hands in front. Now, I should show you this from the side. Feet are basically parallel. The critical thing is, as you sink into a squat, the knee is going in the direction of the foot, okay? So if your feet are going out like this, the knees go out like this. If the feet were in like this, the knees will go in like this. Feet are about parallel. So hands come back, and you swing the hands forward, drop gently, come up. is much more difficult for most people to strike after a step back. So that's the interesting bit, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're going to take Hunt the Debole, simplify it down to a sing single action and focus on the footwork. Yep, that probably got very pretty sort. Thank you very much. All right, Martin, I borrow you thinking you're standing right there. Okay, now, let's go back to the first exercise that we did. If I go forwards, you go backwards. If I go backwards, you go forwards. Ballet, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. Oh. Right? Now, that's the beginning. If I press the sword, disengage, find my debole, and strike. Under the terms of this exercise, I am not allowed to hit you while you do that unless you, <laughs> unless you fail to control my debole. So, I'm, as I'm here, I'm gonna leave my point where it is, right? If you run your face onto it, that's your business. Yeah, I am not going to parry because my job is to give you the tempo. So now the exercise looks something like this. So we're going forwards, we're going backwards, we're going backwards. There it is, yeah. Okay, I just put that in there because I'm, I'm getting hit a lot, <laughs> right? So, so we're here. Da -da 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 I don't have to stand there and wait for it though. Yes? So that was a clear failure, yes? Yes. Yeah. He was unable to change direction in time. Perfect. That's my, that's one in five. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now what I've got to do is just give him the same sort of thing, but maybe give him slightly longer. No, I'm, I need to go for it a little bit quicker. I, I know you, you can hit me from there. Lovely, yeah, and we just keep going. Now, as the coach, it is your job to get hit a lot, okay? I am literally a living pell for my students. One reason why I need to do all this kind of warm me up stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah? What if the coach doesn't really try to close the middle by kind of keep coming from the side? That's a different exercise, okay? What we're looking for right now isn't actually blade skill, it's the ability to strike having moved forward or having moved back, okay? And I'm glad you brought it up because it's really important that you concentrate on one specific thing when you're coaching so the student knows exactly what it is they should be trying to do, yeah? And in this exercise, it is simply when given the tempo of that pressure on the blade, strike by disengage. That's the student's job. The coach's job is to make that just difficult enough that it's useful training, okay? Do you see it? And at the moment, you're not allowed to make it any more difficult by fancy blade actions, okay? Make sense? All right, carry on. Oh, okay. 
All right. Oh, I could borrow you, please. Why not? Can I borrow a sword? Thank you. All right. There we go. Okay. So, now, it's a little bit pointy, so we'll be careful. All right. So, the next stage of this, um, there are several ways you could go. You could start introducing more complicated blade actions, but let's keep it simple. If there is a clear indication on the blade, disengage and strike. Go ahead. Disengage and strike. Boom, keeping the line closed. Yep, and recover in your own time. All right, so clear indication on the blade, disengage and strike, keeping that line closed. Yep, you don't want that sword in your face. All right, now, simple enough, okay? And we're doing it with movement, which means that as I'm moving away from you, you want to be coming towards me, and as I'm coming towards you, you want to be, uh, which means that I can, okay, don't move to the side for now, because it, it's not wrong, it's just, different exercise. So what I'm looking for, move, 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 is to make her life difficult. Yeah, there was a clear motion on the blade and there we go, not quite. Because I'm not going to stand there and wait. Yeah. But what I will do is I will time my action so that her weight is likely to be in the wrong place. Yeah. Malice, remember? Yes. And remember the exercise with the buckler where we got people to either lunge or pass, depending on the timing of you. This is exactly the same. If I want, uh, there's a nice clear tempo for a lunge. Yep, beautiful. Okay. Pass would have been better, wouldn't it? Yeah. If I don't get what I want, I'm not going to let it come through. See, I just put that under my arm because I'm nice like that, right? Your job as the coach is to be an infallible feedback mechanism, right? <laughs> I'll let you know when I get there. Um, what I mean is, if they do the thing they're supposed to be doing, they should hit you. If they are doing the wrong thing, it should fail. Or if they're doing the right thing, not at the necessary level, it should fail. Make sense? So you need to adjust your level, the level of intensity, the level of difficulty to the person standing in front of you, okay? This is really hard to do, which is why we have to practice it, okay? So if you're doing this perfectly, they will fail 20% of the time. Great, that's what you want. But also you will know in advance whether they're gonna hit you with a lunge or a pass, right? Because you will set them up to only be able to use a lunge or a pass in the tempo that you give them. Yeah? Make sense? Most rapier fencers can't pass for shit. Yeah, they can lunge, but they can't pass, right? This kind of exercise, if you only give them opportunities to strike in which the, when a pass will work because they're waiting in the wrong place to lunge, they will very quickly learn to pass because they really want to hit you because they're annoyed with you because you're malicious. Yes? Got it? Have fun. Am I right in thinking that that was quite hard? Yes. yes. Yay! Yes. Good, good, good. All right. <laughs> I'm not going to waste your time on stuff that's easy. Yes? Because you can get that off the internet. Right? But have you all experienced a footwork combination that made it difficult for you to smoothly strike? Yes. 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 Good. Okay. Thing is, to solve a problem, you have to be able to create the problem. Okay? And your coach's job in, that, in these exercises has been largely to make it difficult for you to do the strike that you're supposed to be doing. Just difficult enough for you to actually develop. Okay? But now what I'd like you to do, because whenever you have two people working together, safety considerations are you know, to the fore. You don't want to be actually stabbing people really hard. Okay? So what I want you to do is take some combination that we've done over the last hour or so and work it for smoothness. So let's say, for instance, you found 
that you, after a lunge, and you've recovered with two passes, and the opportunity to do a scan so they'll feel it occurs there, you're getting stuck. So you just practice that. There's my lunge, there's my recover with two passes. At what time in that motion should I do the scan so they'll feel it? Well, I have to get the weight fully on the back. There it is. If I try to do it too early, I get stuck. So what happens if the tempo occurs earlier? While my weight's on the front foot, I need the other foot. Yeah. So it could be something simple. It could be just that you find, as most people would, that after two steps back, things have started to go wobbly, and so you can't lunge. So you work on taking multiple steps back and changing direction. But you just do it on your own. Right? So you don't have to worry about anybody's safety. You can go as fast or as slow as you like. Yeah. And it's just a nice way of taking things that we have been working on and just making them your own. Yeah. Just to very quickly recap. Our goal for this morning's class was to have a look at solving the problem of getting stuck. Yes? I hope I have given you some tools to adapt to whatever training you normally do such that you can address solving the problem of getting stuck in whatever style you happen to practice. Is that fair? Brilliant. We are now at time. So I just want to say, firstly, this is my absolute favorite thing to do, like in-person classes act like me. This is why I do this job, right? Writing books is not nearly so much fun, you know, video stuff there. This is it. So, I want to thank you all very much for coming because it absolutely makes my day, my month, my week and my year to be able to do this kind of thing and I can't do it without you. So, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for not hurting each other. So, if there's anything we've done that you want me to go over, anything from some other system or whatever you want to go over, I don't know, maybe you've read my body book and you want to discuss some body stuff, or you want to do knee massage, whatever, <laughs> just come and find me. I don't bite unless you pay extra. <laughs> so, thank you.